This is the day the Lord has made. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Well, good morning. And welcome. Um, please read all the announcements in the bulletin. And please be aware that um, as the uh, uh, county of Milwaukee has put in a mask mandate, so we suggest um, the same thing for Beautiful Savior. Please go ahead and read all the announcements so you can be appraised of what's going on. So we'll begin this morning by following the Divine Service 3, which is in the hymnal. You can follow or in the service folder, pages 187 through 212, if you would like to follow that way. Or otherwise, just follow along in the... In the, in the um, bulletin. With all of that said, we begin by singing the opening song, The Only Son from Heaven, hymn number 402. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, 
with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You will arise and have pity on Zion. Let this be recorded for a generation to come. That he looked down his holy height to hear the groans of the prisoners that they may declare in Zion the name of the Lord. When peoples gather together, you will arise and have pity on Zion. We be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we bless Thee. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and to defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The first lesson for the third Sunday after the Epiphany is from the eighth chapter of Nehemiah, beginning with verse 1. All the people gathered as one man into the square before the water gate. 
And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all who could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And as he opened it, all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready, for this is the day that is holy to the Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, speaking responsibly, the words of the gradual. Praise the Lord, all nations. For great is his steadfast love towards us. Ascribe to the Lord the glory that is due his name. The second lesson for the day is from the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. All were made to drink of one spirit, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on, on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty which are more presentable parts, do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater, greater honor to the body that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He enrolled the scroll 
And he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of him, and marveled at his gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. What we have heard you did at Capernaum, did here in your own hometown as well. As he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in this hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zephara, in the land of Zidon, to the woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah, and none of them was clean, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and they drove out or drove him out of town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the gospel of the Lord. Christ. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, O Christ, our true and only light, hymn number 839.
that they with us may evermore such grace with wondering thanks adore and endless praise that you be given by all your church in earth and heaven. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text then for this third week in the season of Epiphany is from the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. And it'll serve as the basis for this day's meditation. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, typically it happens every year. We begin the new year with promises. Many, many promises. Promises that we make to ourselves and to one another. We make promises about things that are going to be different in this new year. We don't want things to be the same. We don't want them to be like the previous year. We want something new, something different, something that's out of the ordinary. But it happens, doesn't it? Soon, reality sets in. And by now, you and me are starting to see how those promises that we made, how they are turning out. But as we go through this process, this process of creating our promises and searching for resolution to our life's dilemmas, in order for us to look forward to what we want to be different, we have to stop. And we have to think about where we've been. And how have things been in the past? And how things need to be different? And how things where we want to go? You see, in our text for today, we see the Israelites. They are returning home. Israel is rebuilding. Israel is reorganizing. And through it all, they have to remember how things were. And they soon realize that things cannot and will not be the same. In order for things to be different, one must start with what will make that change. It all starts with a new direction. For the Israelites, it now starts with the Word of God. But there is so much more than God's people just making New Year's resolutions. You see, the Jews had gone through their exile. And they had gone through the trauma of their decision-making and the consequences of their actions. They're ready. And as they gather for the feast that's about to come, to hear the very gift of God, that is the law of Moses, they begin to celebrate a change. Perhaps they remember the words that come from our psalmody for today. The law of the Lord is perfect. Reviving the soul. For the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the hearts. The commandment of the Lord is pure, therefore it enlightens the eyes. As they began the resettlement, and as they began rebuilding their lives, making a change, we see the power of the Word of God. Likewise, today we are gathered. We are gathered here to hear and to respond and to see the power of the Word of God in and through Christ Jesus. I mean, let's face it. The last few years have been difficult. And now, hopefully, we are finally coming out of that. And we're seeing the grace of God that is here in this church. 
the Word of God. It powerfully gathers His people together from all places in the world. They gather together not just as an individual, but as a common group. As the word is about to be read, the people in response, they stand together and prepare to hear the word together. That gather together, not only as a single person, but as a cohesive unit. The law is indeed a gift from God. And it is their center, the Israelite center of their life. So that begs us the question for today. What is the center of your life? Going back to Israel, we see that the Israelites had gathered together, not just as individuals, as we commonly think of ourselves in worship, but as the text says, as a community. As a community receiving and giving. As the word was about to be read, the people in response, they stood together and prepared to hear the word together. They gathered together not only as single, but as a unit. What a remarkable comparison that is for us today here in God's house. By the very sacrifice of Christ right there on the cross, you and I are gathered together in one body as the baptized children of God. We gather to hear and to listen to the word of God, to raise our voices in song. And upon hearing that word, we rise to our feet. not just out of respect, but also knowing that the Word itself contains life, forgiveness, and salvation. It gives us Christ. You see, the whole thing is, the Word of God is so powerful. It opens our ears and our eyes and our hearts. And the people of God are to read, to be proclaimed to, to be instructed. They receive the words that are being spoken. And here's the beauty. And they understood. As Nehemiah the prophet tells us in verse 3, verse 5, verse 6, and verse 8. The people have been gathered. But now they hear the words as they are delivered. The leaders and the teachers of the community are faithful to their calling in proclaiming and teaching the word of God. And what the people hear what their hearts say, and their minds receive and believe is so important. Again, the whole experience of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, it relates back to the appointed psalm, where it says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We think of prayer that we inwardly digest the Word of God. Lord God, we pray, bless your Word wherever it is proclaimed. Make it a word of power and of peace to convert those who yet have not heard. Let your own confirm those very words by having a saving faith. You see, the Word of God powerfully moves the hearers to respond in repentance and in joy. And if you think back to the prophets Ezra and Nehemiah, they have a bit of a situation on their hands. As the people hear the word, they respond in tears and are visibly, physically moved. The law as it's spoken brings a conviction of their sin. We know that God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And it seems to have created problems for the Israelites. Now, Esther and Nehemiah, one of the few last prophets, and to all who are teaching, they call for the weeping to cease. For this is the day of the Lord. So, what do they do? The word is being preached, and 
the people are not receiving it. So they send the people off to go and to celebrate. And they even provide for those who aren't prepared. They try again the following week, and the week after, and the week after. And the people are given their direction and blessing to go in joy and strength in the Lord. They are to turn their hearts to God and find their joy in none other than Him. The whole point of Nehemiah's ministry was that people should be filled with celebration, just as David who danced before the ark. That brings us to us today. There should be repentance and joy in our life. And we should hear in the reading of God's word, his law, that we have much of which to be grateful. For example, People are not coming to church anymore. They aren't willing to hear the word of God. This is a problem throughout the world. This is a problem for us here at Beautiful Savior. You see, you and I, we need the time. Or we need to make time for God. Because in God and God alone we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. truly is a blessing that we who gather together in one turn our hearts to the Lord in joy because we also have heard the other word from the Lord which is his gospel the Savior to which Ezra and Nehemiah and all the prophets and to all their people they look forward has come and Jesus has died for those sins, and he has risen. We are receiving the benefits of his word this day and forever. And we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. There was a time when the word for us meant weeping and tears. But the joy of it is, is today. Today is the good news that you and I live in the time that Jesus has prepared for us. And this word is for you this very day. Your sins are indeed forgiven. Here's the blessing. Jesus loves you very much. So my dear friends in Christ, our mistake would be to consider Nehemiah the 8th chapter, well, just for this Sunday. It is our every Sunday lesson, if you will. It is our gathering together, hearing the ever-moving and ever-sustaining Word of God, and having our hearts turn to His eternal joy. Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, is not just the start of New Year's resolution, or for the time that those resolutions last. It is also the weekly, even daily, return to God's Word with our brothers and sisters in Christ. So what is it, Pastor, you're trying to say? Go in peace and know that the Lord loves you and that he has died for you. And he has risen from the dead so that you may have life in his name. John 3.16 says the best. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Nehemiah the eighth chapter is a reminder for us to return to God's words and to do so with our brothers and sisters in Christ and to find that great renewal of body, mind, and soul and to receive his gifts, ultimately having peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we say, Amen. We'll continue then with our offerings, for the Lord loves a cheerful giver.
We stand. We'll continue with her offertory. Restore on me, heart, O oh God, and renew our right spirit within me. Cast we not away from thy presence that take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy tree spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, gracious Lord, we give you thanks that you have arisen and that has come to show the world your saving grace. Place upon our heart your love. May our actions show your grace to one another. Receive us in faith, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, your people in the days of the prophet Ezra and Nehemiah, return to your word with attentive ears. Give us eagerness to do the same that our days may be sanctified and your commandments put into practice. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Holy Father, you have arranged us as members of one body, one body gathered together in Christ. Free us from the jealousy or contempt towards our fellow Christians and lead us to bestow honor on our weaker brother so that we may show love through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh, Heavenly Father, bless all families and homes, that one generation may tell to the next the wonderful works of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh God, you are the God who gives wisdom and courage. We ask that you would do so to all, especially to those who govern our communities and our country that they may lead well. Following your will rather than man's whims, we ask that you would grant us willingness to support them with our prayers and encouragement so that they may govern according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Oh Lord, comfort those who are sick, those who are frail, those who are in need of healing. As we lift it before you in our those who are close and dear to our hearts. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would grant them healing and strength. As our great physician, we ask that you would mend the bodies and uplift the spirits of all those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So go, and not only hear the word of God, but do what it says. Receive then his eternal blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 You may be seated. We'll close in with hymn number 924. Go in peace and may you have a blessed week.
possessing thy umph and redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration from your gospel joyful sound. May thy fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found.